kiddos, and we're back. We're continuing to talk about spontaneity of chemical reactions. Hopefully, you remember the term spontaneity. Uh, we said nature goes in two directions spontaneously. So let's see. Let's see if we remember that. Which way does nature go spontaneously? Let's do delta H first. Endothermic or exothermic? That's right. If you said exothermic or a negative delta H, you are correct. What about entropy? Remember, entropy sign was delta S. Does nature favor more disorder, positive delta S, or less disorder? Yeah, if you said more disorder or positive delta S, you are correct. So nature favors these directions that have a negative delta H and a positive delta S. But what if delta H is positive and delta S is negative? Yeah, if you think that through, those would be non-spontaneous reactions. Can you think of any other scenarios? Yeah, what if delta H is positive and delta S is positive? Doesn't this favor the reaction proceeding spontaneously, but the negative or the positive delta H does not favor the reaction moving in a spontaneous direction? Or what if delta H is negative and delta S is negative? Yeah, we have a similar situation, except this time the negative delta H favors the reaction going spontaneously, but the negative delta S says it's not going to go spontaneously. So we have entropy and enthalpy competing with each other, so to speak. So we have that situation here with ice. If you remember, we asked, does ice melt spontaneously? Let's take a look at the signs for delta H and delta S for ice melting spontaneously. Let's do delta H first. When we go from a solid to a liquid, are we, uh, is that an exothermic process or an endothermic process? Does it give off heat or does it consume heat? That's right. If you said going from a solid to a liquid, we have to add heat to pull those molecules in that nice little crystal system away from each other into a liquid, you are correct. So melting ice is endothermic and delta H is definitely positive. What about entropy? We're going from a solid to a liquid. What happens to entropy when we go from a solid to a liquid? Do you remember from the last video? Yeah, entropy increases. So the sign of entropy is positive also in this case. So we have this scenario where delta H is positive, which is not favored, and delta S is positive, which is favored. So will this reaction proceed spontaneously? And the question is, or the answer is, we don't know. We don't know yet. So let's, let's see if we can figure this out. We know through experience that at room temperature, ice does melt spontaneously. But if we get it below zero degrees Celsius, it does not. So I hope you would agree that temperature must be considered sometimes in the spontaneity of reactions. Well, here is this magically appearing formula of great importance. We call it the Gibbs free energy equation. It tells us that if we take the enthalpy change of my reaction and subtract the product of the temperature and the entropy change of the system, we can solve for something called delta G. Now, delta G represents the free energy change of the reaction. Delta H, we already know, represents the enthalpy. T is the temperature. Now, this T is the temperature, but it must be the Kelvin temperature. So to find Kelvin temperature, remember we take the Celsius temperature and we add 273 to it and that will equal the Kelvin temp. And delta S, you know, represents the change in entropy. The free energy released or absorbed in a chemical reaction is equal to the difference between the enthalpy change and the product of the change of the entropy in joules and the temperature, remember, in kelvins. Now, it's important to note that if delta G is greater than zero, that means it has a positive sign. The reaction is considered non-spontaneous. That means we have to add energy for that reaction to continue. If delta G is less than zero, that means its sign is negative, the reaction is considered spontaneous. That means there's enough energy 
for that reaction to continue on its own without continually having to add energy. So now let's go to our water example. Let's figure out the delta G of this reaction. Now I previously calculated the heat of this reaction, or physical change actually in this case, and the entropy change. Now we have to be careful here. When I did this, I found the, the heat of this change in kilojoules per mole and the entropy change in joules per mole Kelvin. So let's be a little bit careful with the units here. So my delta G would be delta H minus T delta S. Remember? So my delta H is a positive 6.01 kilojoules per mole. My temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. So if I want to find the Kelvin temperature, I'll take my 20 Celsius and I'll add 273 to it. So my Kelvin temperature would be 293 Kelvin. 293 Kelvin. And my entropy change is a positive 21.99 joules per mole Kelvin. Now wouldn't that be equal to 0 0.02199 kilojoules per mole Kelvin. Yeah, we have to make sure that the units are the same for both delta H and delta S. So let's write that as 0 0.02199 kilojoules per mole Kelvin. I forgot to put my, yeah. So let's see if the math work, or the units work. Kelvins are going to divide out here, and I'll be taking kilojoules per mole and subtracting kilojoules per mole. So the units should work, and let's see what we end up with here. So off to the side, I'm going to use my calculator, and you should try to use yours right along with me um, to make sure you're using it properly. So I have 6.01, and I'm going to subtract, now I'm going to use my parentheses key, kiddos, the product of 293 and 0.02199. I'm going to close off my parentheses. And I get a negative number. I get negative 0.43 kilojoules per mole. So, is this spontaneous at 20 degrees Celsius? Well, you already know that ice melts spontaneously above zero degrees Celsius, but haven't we just confirmed it by calculating delta G? The sign is negative, so we know that this reaction, or change, at 20 degrees Celsius is spontaneous. What do you think will happen at negative 20 degrees Celsius? Now let's try that one. Let's try negative 20 now. So we're going to do delta G equals, remember it's delta H minus T delta S. So my delta H, even though the temperature changes, the delta H is consistent. So it's still positive 6.01 kilojoules per mole minus my temperature now, and that's negative 20. So let's do this off to the side. Negative 20 Celsius plus 273 is 253 Kelvin, isn't it? So 253 Kelvin times my delta S, and I have to make sure the units are the same, so 0 0.02199 kilojoules per mole Kelvin. So my kelvins divide out, and once again I'm subtracting kilojoules per mole from kilojoules per mole, so my units are nice. So let's plug that in our calculators and see what we get. 6.01 minus, now I have to take the product of 253 and 0 0.02199, so I'm using my parentheses key here, so 253 times 0 0.02199, and I get positive 0.45, positive 0.45. 0.45 kilojoules per mole. Well, you all know that ice does not melt spontaneously at temperatures below zero degrees Celsius. So at negative 20, we know that ice does not melt spontaneously, but notice delta G is positive. We verified it, that at negative 20, this would be non-spontaneous. Okay? All right, let's do it again, but this time let's do it at zero degrees Celsius. I wonder what happens at zero degrees Celsius. What does ice do at zero degrees Celsius? Does it melt spontaneously? Well, let's use this Gibbs free energy equation to find out. Let's find delta H and we'll subtract that from T delta S and see what we get. So to solve for delta G, 
we're going to take delta H, which is positive 6.01 kilojoules per mole, and we're going to subtract out um, T times my delta S. Now my T is 0 degrees Celsius, so that's just 273 Kelvin right on the nose, times 0 0.02199 kilojoules per mole Kelvin. So on our calculator, we're going to have 6.01. We're going to subtract out the product of 273 and 0 0.02199. So let's use our parentheses key again. 273 times 0 0.02199, close my parentheses. And I get 0, 0.0 kilojoules per mole. Well, is that positive or negative? That's right. It's not either. So it is at equilibrium at that temperature. That's the melting point, or you could say freezing point, of water. So it's not positive or negative. It's actually melting at the same rate that it is freezing. Sort of interesting, isn't it? All right. Let's take a look at the next page. I think I have another example problem for you. So why don't you try doing example 8 without my help? So pause the video. Try doing example 8 with the information I've given you, calculate delta G, and then determine whether the reaction is spontaneous at 382 Kelvin or not. Okay? See you in a second. All right. Welcome back. So let's see. We have delta G equals the delta H of a reaction minus T delta S of that reaction. So, my delta H of the reaction is 145 kilojoules. So, 145 kilojoules minus my T. Well, I gave you the temperature in Kelvin this time. That's pretty nice of me, isn't it? 382 Kelvin times delta S. Now, look, delta S is given in joules per Kelvin. So, wouldn't that be the same as 0.322 kilojoules per mole Kelvin? So 0.322 kilojoules per mole Kelvin. And this was kilojoules per mole back there. So Kelvins divide out, and we're subtracting kilojoules per mole from kilojoules per mole. So let's see what we get, kiddos. 145 minus, I'm going to use my parentheses key again, 382 times 0.322, close off my parentheses, and I get... 22.0. It's a positive 22.0 kilojoules per mole. So is that reaction spontaneous or not spontaneous? Yeah, if delta G is greater than zero, that means we have to add energy to continue the reaction. So this would be an example of a non-spontaneous reaction. Okay, did you guys get the same answer? All right. Well, the next time we see each other, we're going to practice some problems. We're going to do example 9 together. And then I want to go through this chart on the bottom, which is pretty darn helpful. So we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.